uh, you know, I knew that what I was posting on Facebook and then on Twitter was going to get me banned. I knew that because it was too it was too close to the truth. In fact, it was on the truth. So that was going to get me banned. Now, I could still be on Facebook and Twitter if I'd have compromised on what I was uh, posting. But what's the point of posting way back from the cutting edge uh, just because you fear that, that, that some uh, bunch of prats in um, Silicon Valley are going to ban you from their platform? So I just kept posting what I knew to be right. And they ban you. Okay, so th now we'll find other ways to do it. And, you know, it's, it's amazing how, um, despite being banned from all these platforms, including YouTube, that the information still massively circulates. I'm doing it on the basis of what I know to be right. I'm not compromising. Well, better not say that. No, no, it's the truth, isn't it? Well, yeah, I think it's the truth. Yeah, <laughs> say it then. As you compromise, well, I'll just compromise here. To, so that won't happen. Oh dear, well, I better compromise a bit more so that won't happen. And in the end, it, it, it's a waste of time because you're no longer saying anything that's relevant. If we believe in freedom, then we believe in the freedom of people to make their own free choice on how they receive what we're putting out. So if people um, want to uh, ignore it and abuse me for it, well, that's fair enough. Um, you go ahead because you're not having an effect on me. Because that's what—that's that, one of the great um, things that people uh, seem to forget. Mm. It's not how we're abused that affects us; it's how we choose to be affected by it. So, if someone says something to 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 someone that's not very nice, and, or, or people can get hurt, well, how can you say that about me? Well, people say stuff like that to me. I said, well, you know, thanks for sharing that with me. Have a nice day. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter unless I make it matter. And, and you, you learn this from, from, from experience over the years, to not get attached to how it's received. Obviously, it's nice when, you, when you're appreciated, but I don't need appreciation to do what I do. Whether I'm appreciated or whether I'm not, I'm still going to go boom, boom, boom in doing what I know to be right. I'm not going to be affected by whether people like me or whether they don't like me. I'm going to do what I know to be right to be perceptually manipulated in a way that previous, even previous generations uh, weren't. And uh, you, you have this uh, pressure to uh, obey the echo chamber and not free think and have a different opinion. And, uh, you know, you, I've seen um, polls and um, articles about uh, young people at university who um, stay quiet if they have opinions that are not part of the woke orthodoxy because they know what the consequence is going to be. So I do feel sorry for them. Uh, and, and um, you know, a lot of perceptual manipulation is done by making it very unpleasant to have a different opinion. And so you start to parrot the orthodoxy and another psychological aspect of this is that to to try to maintain your own self-respect you start convincing yourself in the end that the orthodoxy is true so that so that you don't have to face yourself and see that what you've actually done is given up your self-respect to conform so there's lots of these psychological games going on uh, with the young if people think it's bad now, then what's in uh, play and uh, in train for today's young people and children is utterly, utterly horrific. And the reason they're targeting the young psychologically so incessantly and to such an extreme is they are perceptually programming and preparing them to accept the world that's coming if we don't, if we allow it to come. In terms of explaining to people uh, and getting, getting them to start to look at things from another angle, I think there's a, there's a couple of things. One is something that I call know the outcome and you'll see the journey. 
number one, people need to know um, what the agenda is, what the outcome is planned to be. And then what you start to do, know the outcome and you'll see the journey, is every day you'll see stepping stones to that outcome. And suddenly you realize, and it becomes crystal clear, it really does, once you know what the outcome is planned to be, um, and the relationship of these different parts of the outcome, then every day you see the stepping stones, I call it the totalitarian tiptoe, it's a sprint now, towards the, that, that outcome. And in that awareness, the random disappears. What you thought was this is that, and that's that, and that's that, you, they connect. So it's, it's, it's setting out what the agenda is, and then people start to see the dots, the random dots form into a picture of daily progression towards that outcome. And you, you start hope. being able to absolutely read the world in a way that you never thought possible. I mean, every day on davidike.com, uh, I'm, I'm putting news stories into context and connecting them to other news stories to show the progression towards this this outcome of um, not just a a global fascist dictatorship, but um, of uh, the transformation of the human body and control of the human mind by artificial intelligence. Because uh, young people watching this, you are manipulated um, to move along very soon to a point where artificial intelligence will be connected to your brain and body. If you don't know what the outcome is planned to be and why the outcome is happening, you might buy the sales pitch, which is connect your brain to AI and uh, you will be superhuman. You will be like the gods. But the idea is not to make us superhuman, it's to make us subhuman and to replace the human mind as we now know it with an AI mind, um, which will, if it, by being connected to all humans, will become a hive mind of centrally dictated perception. I hope you enjoyed today's segment, and here is a takeaway from today's video. In today's segment, David Icke said that the fear of what other people think is one big prison a lot of people are living in today. A lot of people are not living the life they would love to experience. They are living life based on what they think other people think they should be. But David Icke said that we should be expressing and celebrating our own uniqueness. We shouldn't be giving our power away through acquiescence and peer pressure. When you lose the fear of what other people think of you, you break the vision of you that is created by your acquiescence to what other people think you should be. I hope you enjoyed today's segment. Leave a comment in the comment section about what you think about today's video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.